Hey there. Um, the title of the book really reminded me of David Graeber's Bullshit Jobs, <laughs> where, and you know, in that book, he talks about how, um, you know, everything's useless now. You could be taping boxes, whatever. And also, I have to, I love the front cover where it's keywords, mm. where if capital is dead, you know, I haven't read your book, I'm just discovering it, that it reminds me that everything boils down to YouTube keywords, mm. that we're all on YouTube, we're all on Instagram, we're all on Facebook, and our content we consume in is basically YouTube celebrities and Let's Play, and this kind of warps our reality, including to, and for the fortunately, the election of Donald Trump, and that's all this kind of gets into the whole alt-right sphere and meme culture and whatnot. Um, what is your thoughts on the whole YouTube virtual market that we're all now just on Instagram making friends and YouTube because it seems like the capital we are making is we're all being forced to be some nerds on the internet and there's no way out or that the ideal that this is being live stream is the only kind of sad reality or something like that. This yeah. is being live streamed. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sort of that that sense that um, like the the only way forward in one's life is is to be you know performing information labor for free uh to the point that you could find some way to monetize it uh so during my transition i started watching a lot of makeup tutorials you know so it's like oh so someone's trying to like generate enough followers to then be sponsored you know so there's there's a sense in which that becomes a a kind of uh outsourcing of the risk of generating information anybody would want directly to the point of production. So no one's going to risk investing uh, in the production of information until it's already proven itself, but you still need them to do that because you don't have real access to the infrastructure is sort of the trap one we all get caught in kind of thing. If you're trying to do any job that's not, you know, sort of service work uh, in this particular political economy. So yeah, it's, I think that's very much the sort of, uh, and the book starts with that surface level, that that's sort of exactly where it looks like we are. But then as, you know, not that it's capital, but in, in capital, Marx wants to rip back the veil and show behind that is production. And that's the part I think, you know, the, the other part that needs to be filled out and written. Probably not by me, because I don't have the patience. I, I like Marx's political writing, I have to confess. I'm not a, not a huge fan of Capital, but I read it. And that's the other thing that, to go to Andrew's question, you get super invested in the books you spent such a fuck of a long time trying to understand. Like, nobody wants to be told, you know, uh, you, like, if you figured out Heidegger, you're a Heideggerian. Like, there's just no way out of it. You figure out Marx, you're a Marxist, because it's like, you know, is someone going to say, I spent five years of my life trying to figure this writer out, and now I just, I'm not into it. <laughs> Hi, Fred. Hi, Mackenzie. Um, 